Major Canadian oil company Encana is leaving for greener pastures in Trump's energy utopia. Will the last oil and gas company please turn the lights off on the way out the door? I've said time and time again, and you're all tired of hearing me say it, uh, you can't make a choice between what's good for the environment and what's good for the economy. Uh, we can't shut down the oil sands tomorrow. Uh, we need to phase them out. Yes, that is Canada's Prime Minister promising to put Alberta in the poorhouse while continuing to import conflict oil from the likes of Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, even Nigeria. Look, we even import oil from the United States despite the fact that the world's third largest proven oil reserves exist right here in Alberta. In fact, Trudeau campaigned on standing up to what he called oil barons. However, he did it at the French language debate to pander to those anti-Alberta sentiments in Quebec. Just watch. And we need to stand up to conservatives like Jason Kenney and Doug Ford and uh, the oil barons who are supporting them to continue to fight against climate change and build a better world. And again, while Trudeau was panhandling for those sweet, sweet Quebec votes, he campaigned on attacking Alberta one more time at a campaign stop in Montreal in mid-October, Trudeau said, Quebecers need to stand up and fight against those like Jason Kenney and Doug Ford and other conservative politicians. Evidently, phasing out the oil sands and attacking Albertans and putting us out of work, well, it might be the only thing Trudeau is actually good at because another one of those oil barons he promised to get rid of has evacuated Canada and changed the company's name to shirk off the stink of Canadian failure. The Financial Post had the news this morning. In Canada Corporation, a company that was born out of the 19th century railway boom, announced its plans to move its headquarters to the United States and drop the link to Canada from its name. And Canada has been around since the late 1800s when CP Railway accidentally discovered natural gas while drilling a water well. The company was spun out from CP Rail and became Encana in 2002. The oil sand side of Encana became Synovus in 2009. Encana has been the Canadian oil patch through and through from the very beginning. I guess until now, which appears to be sadly the bitter end of it. The Calgary-based company said Thursday that it will establish a corporate domicile in the United States early next year and rebrand under the name Ovintiv Inc. And Canis said the move will expose it to larger pools of investment. Are there no investment dollars coming to Trudeau's Canada? But this heartbreaking loss to Canada is actually the second major oil and gas company to withdraw from the country in just 24 hours, look at this in the CBC. Citadel Drilling has moved its entire operation to the Permian Basin in West Texas and southeastern New Mexico. CEO Dan Hofferth says if Citadel Drilling had stayed in Canada, it wouldn't have survived. There just isn't enough activity here to support our operations. The Canadian drilling fleet, at least in Western Canada, is down to about half. And last week, actually just the day after Trudeau's anti-oil government was re-elected, Husky laid off dozens of workers in Calgary. Now, let me just stop here for a second, because I'll get some criticism here. Both in Canada's and Husky's CEOs have said that the election results had no bearing on their decision making. But hold on a moment. These very recent decisions to lay people off, relocate and rebrand have all come at the tail end of years of Alberta NDP and federal liberal policies. And the NDP liberal policies are what is scaring away all that investment to more friendly jurisdictions like the United States, where taxes are lower, where there are no carbon taxes, regulations are being constantly repealed, and land is being opened up for drilling. And a pipeline doesn't have to go through something as crazy as a gender-based analysis as part of an extremely onerous, sometimes decade-long approval process. And these CEOs, well, they don't want to burn any bridges on the way out the door. They may be businessmen, but in today's reality, they also have to play politics too. 
And who could forget how Trans Canada Pipeline Company changed their name to TC Energy earlier this year? Another company that was born in Western Canada yet can't do business here because of the Notley Trudeau Pipeline blockade. Now they're just trying to get a fresh start somewhere else under a different banner. However, friends, those are just but a few Canadian companies that have decided to abandon Canada altogether. An examination in Financial Post done up until August 22nd, 2019, so this doesn't include any of these recent Canadian capital evacuations, concluded that some $30 billion worth of foreign company divestitures have occurred in the Canadian oil patch in the past three years. I suppose this is what we get when our nation re-elected an anti-oil, anti-Alberta drama teacher from Quebec to be the Prime Minister who hangs on to power through the support of the anti-oil Green Party and the anti-oil NDP and the anti-Alberta Bloc Québécois. And I think the worst is yet to come. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Unlike the mainstream media, at Rebel News, we tell the truth about Justin Trudeau's anti-oil job-killing policies. And that means we will never take a penny from the government. We are fiercely independent and we rely on the support of people like you at home. And one of the best ways to support us at the Rebel and give yourself a bit of a treat is to get yourself a premium subscription to the Rebel. You can do that at premium.rebelnews.com.